Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to his neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have one over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. St. Mother Teresa was asked by a politician, why do you think there hasn't been a female president of the United States? And she said, well, I think maybe perhaps she had been aborted. Mother Teresa is a figure that we see as one who is willing to correct out of love. We hear in the scriptures today about fraternal correction in the first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, God is reminding us that we have this call on our hearts to stand as a prophetic witness to what is true and good, and to be willing to love people, even on, beyond what one may feel is necessary. We hear in the second reading from St. Paul to the Romans, he says, Owe oh, nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And we hear in the scriptures that love is patient, that there is long suffering in love. And brothers and sisters, we can think that Jesus is trying to tell us there's a limit to how that love is, but the gospel today, I think, might cause us to scratch our head. Because he says, if if the person who you tell that they have sinned, if they don't listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. And I began to ask myself, how did Jesus treat Gentiles and tax collectors? He loved them. He ate with them. He healed them. He cast out demons from them. This is what Jesus did. And so brothers and sisters, we want to ask ourselves whether we are willing to love the way God has asked of us. Mother Teresa was often quoted as saying that in order for love to be real, it has to hurt. Now that might sound, some people might say, gee, Father Chris, that sounds masochistic, but that's not what we mean. It doesn't mean that one has to continue to allow abuse or anything like that. The question is whether one is willing to enter into the, the depths of pain and the depths of compassion that is suffering with somebody when we see that somebody is either in error or that somebody is wandering far away from the truth, whatever it may be. The reason for this and the whole point of our even being here today is that there was one who had compassion on us, Jesus Christ who took upon himself our sins and died in our place, suffering his passion. So brothers and sisters, we are not called to this kind of love on our own strength. Certainly we aren't able to do that on our own. We are called instead to have what Jesus gives to us, long suffering, compassion, to be willing to enter into difficulties. If we truly wish to love our neighbor as ourself as we hear, we want to realize that this love begins first here. Because to love our neighbor as ourself, to care for others, means first and foremost to receive 
the bounteous love that God gives to us. God is not asking us to empty ourselves and then come and be filled. He's asking us to be filled and then go and distribute what we have received from him here at this Mass. So yes, and it's true, Mother Teresa of Calcutta would say that if you wish to change the world, first start by loving people at home. And I would say, when we want to love people at home, we want to follow her example. The first one she loved was God. She worshipped Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and spent two hours of prayer in front of Jesus every day before going out and doing all of her apostolic labors, caring for the poorest of the poor, the sickest of the sick, the people that many of us in our worst days might pass by on the street. And so we see her as an example. Today would be the anniversary of her death back in 1997, and it's for the Missionaries of Charity, her religious order, it is the feast day of St. Mother Teresa. But it all starts here, brothers and sisters, here at this Mass. Are we willing to love Jesus until it hurts? Now, what does that mean here at Mass? How do we love Jesus till it hurts? Maybe it means that we say the prayer with just a little bit more depth of meaning that we're here to say. Maybe it's that we try singing with just a little bit more fervor. Maybe it's that we enter into the whole act of thanksgiving, the Eucharist, giving thanks to God for what he has done for us with heart, mind, body, and soul, recognizing that there's a reason why we stand, there's a reason why we kneel. Each and every single one of these words, every single one of these positions, all of our liturgical actions, they have a meaning. And to enter into that meaning, taking that, that little extra effort might cause us, quote unquote, to love until it hurts. So brothers and sisters, we recognize here at this Mass that we receive Jesus himself. And so we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, you have asked us to love beyond our own capability of loving. And we know that it is impossible for us to love without your gifts of the Spirit. We ask in your most holy name, Jesus, for you to stir up into us the fruits of the Spirit of long-suffering, of patience, and of charity. Jesus, we admit we are not able to love as you ask us, even willing to risk correcting others as you ask us because sometimes we're afraid, sometimes we're afraid of what people will think of us. But Jesus, we ask you to give us courage beyond our fear, to give us long-suffering beyond our own comfortableness, our own comfort. Give us the courage to step out in faith and the love to care for every single person we meet throughout this week and through every day. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen. Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Taking to heart Jesus' words in the gospel of whatever two or four of us are given on earth that will be loosed here in heaven and will be loosed on earth, we will present our petitions before our Heavenly Father. For the church, may the Lord graciously preserve and protect her as a sign of the truth in this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, may their leaders be governed by the power of the Holy Spirit in love of and service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those blinded by sin, may the compassion and mercy of God lead them to goodness and repentance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of worship, with the grace of this sacrament, may we be drawn ever more deeply into unity with one another and our triune God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died from the effects of the coronavirus, may they rest in the peace of God's perfect love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Christopher LaPointe, for whom we pray for in a special way this past, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We take a moment to pray in a special way for all the missionaries of charity, whether lay, sisters, and brothers, or priests, that they may follow them. Steps of St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta and truly show us what it means to love the way Jesus asked with five fingers, You did it to me. We ask this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and truth, you lead us deeper into relationship with you through every prayer we offer. We ask that you hear the prayers we offer today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give us the gift of true prayer and of peace. Graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Let's try that again. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord 
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Your holy people. Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. like the deer that yearns for running streams. So my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Actually, I think just one. This Friday and Saturday coming up will be the virtual benefit concert that we're having, the STA Weekend of Praise. And so Friday night will begin um, September 11th. Friday night, September 11th, will be the contemporary group from 6.30 to 8. And then from 6.30 to 8 on Saturday, the 12th, we'll have the STA Choir. So please tune in via the Facebook page, St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church, the Facebook page. So it will be live streamed to that. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord in your life. Thank you, Jesus.